once in a while I come upon a really cool simulation or a video game that I think has a really really high educational potential and may also teach you something really cool. Now this is actually very unusual but this one it comes from the Ubisoft, a very big video game company that is about to release a game called The Division. It's called Tom Clancy's Division that is going to be a multiplayer game that basically uh, has you play inside of a, a post-apocalyptic world where you have to basically survive and help other people and so on. But this is kind of a, a prequel that they actually made, sort of a, almost like a commercial for this game. But by itself, this is actually really cool and you should totally check it out. It's called The Collapse. Now, what this is all about, I think I'm just going to show you instead of talking about it so that you get to decide for yourself. Now, it says choose starting point. Let's actually just do this first. You have been infected with an unknown breed of smallpox. You are patient zero. Because of you, a worldwide pandemic is about to start. Based on data, discover how this will proceed. Collapse, the end of society simulator. Now, this by itself is actually not a game. Like it says in the introduction, it is a simulator. You have to choose your location in the beginning. Now, I'm currently in South Korea, so this is why some of the names may actually seem unfamiliar, but I'm going to choose um, Seoul which is the capital of South Korea, as the start. So imagine I caught that smallpox and <laughs> I am right here in Seoul. Now it tells me that, uh, well, so this population density of South Korea, it tells you all the information here. This is uh, day one. I've already infected 23 people. And it suddenly, it says you're at home, you suddenly feel feverish. You decide to go to, and it gives you a choice. There's a bit of a choice here. And then, uh, all of these names are in Korean, but basically it tells you, you know, which hospital do you want to go to. I'm going to go to this right here, Hanyan University Hospital, um, which is somewhere in Seoul. On your way to the university, you infect 24 other people, because that's what would happen if you were um, on a transportation, on a public transportation and going somewhere. Uh, par paramedics are particularly exposed to the virus you are, um, and are quickly infected as well. Going from one department to another, they spread the disease to other hospitals. So this is actually a true fact. In many hospitals, it's usually the doctors and the paramedics that get infected uh, the most uh, because they are exposed to all of these viruses at, you know, on a daily basis and they have to be super careful not to get infected. There are, on average, only 30 hospital beds per 1,000 inhabitants. In times of crisis, your, your chance of getting a bed is almost non-existent. This is also true, so there's only about 30 hospital beds or 3 hospital beds per 100 people. In other words, if everyone gets infected, you will very likely not get a bed. So if it's a pandemic or if it's a situation where an epidemic is going on, you may want to actually avoid hospitals. Day 2. Now, uh, all of these dots you see, these are infected people, and uh, total infected is currently at 200, over 200, almost a million, basically. I stopped uh, counting because there's just too many people already infected. And on day five, the infection is spreading fast. Hospitals are now overcrowded. You dis you're discharged with a prescription for a flu shot and need to go to, and we get to choose where we got to go, get to go. You can go to the pharmacy or, I guess, a store where they sell uh, medicine. But before we go there, let's read this. Um, it takes at least six weeks for a new batch of medication to reach pharmacies shelves. The consequences of a shortfall during the pandemic would be dramatic. So because of the logistical uh, problems, uh, even in regular on regular days, not when it's an epidemic or anything, it, it takes a long time for any kind of medicine that is uh, just developed to get to the pharmacy. So it will take a very long time before um, this particular um, medicine for this particular virus even makes it to the pharmacy. And the thing is, most viruses are actually incurable. Most people don't realize that the only way to cure a virus is with your own immune system. There is no actual medicine for viruses. So any kind of a flu, any kind of a virus cannot be actually treated with any medicine. Only a bacterial infection can be treated with a with an antibacterial medicine, but unfortunately viruses are untreatable. You can only support your own immune system that can try to fight the virus. So we're going to go to um, this right here, Teha, I think it's called Tawa Pharmacy. Uh, don't really know what that is, I have not been to this area. With uh, 500,000 people infected in your area, hmm, didn't get to read this. Um, all right, so because of, you, uh, of the dangerously increasing number of infected people, the authorities are organizing vaccine distributions. You decide to go to the nearest venue. Um, fact here is that we are only capable of producing 2.4 billion flu vaccines per year. 
Experts estimate that such a virus could spread to all 7 billion humans in just a few months. Now, there was a video game I reviewed very recently called Plague Inc. that actually allows you to play as a virus and your goal is to basically destroy the humanity. And even in that game, you can kind of uh, pretty much destroy everyone or kill everyone within um, months. And it's not very difficult to do because um, epidemics and viruses and the bacteria, they actually spread really, really fast as this game demonstrates. All right, so where are we going to go? Well, let's go to, oh, public TV studio. Sure, why not? Uh, because I guess we have no medicine. We're going to go watch a movie instead. We're going to go really far and we'll reach another area. Thousands of frightened people are, are amassed near the distribution points. Um, so this is, I guess, the closest distribution area. Police forced to intervene as the situation is heating up. Um, the virus has taken its first victims. First people die. And people are starting to uh, people are starting to die. A state of emergency has been declared. You decide to go to the supermarket to buy enough food so you can barricade yourself in. So this is normally what would happen. People would panic. They would try to stay at home. They would try to buy as much food as they can. And um, the average household only stocks a maximum of three days of um, food, uh, three days worth of food provisions. Uh, in my household, I think it's even less because I I do eat a lot. Uh, anyway, supermarket. Well, where are we gonna go? So let's go to this first one. I'm not even gonna try to say that. Uh, it's a supermarket nearby. Looting uh, starts to take place. Uh, food being the most stolen item. So all of this is actually very realistically represented, uh, especially based on um, various rights that we actually did have in real life. Uh, Two million infected, hundred eighty thousand dead. Um, rights are breaking out. Police forces are now outnumbered. The streets are set ablaze, so this is only within days, day 9. The city is no longer safe, you have to escape. From Gimpo International, which is actually an, air an airport, you decide to take a flight to where we're going to go. So time to escape the country. With more than 8 million passengers a day, planes are the main catalyst of infection. And that's actually how many viruses actually usually spread. Uh, for example, viruses like SARS spread through airplanes from Hong Kong to many different countries, including my home country of Canada. It was there within days after the first infection um, in, in Hong Kong. And more recently, a virus called MERS, which stands for uh, Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome, actually spread to South Korea and uh, caused a lot of fatalities in the country. And actually, it did come by airplane from a tourist that visited Saudi Arabia. And so, where are we going to go? Well, let's actually go to... Um, let's go to China. Why not? Let's go to Beijing capital. We're moving to Beijing as people are dying. We'll, and there we go from Korea to China, and look at that. Look at how many infections around the world started to occur. Day 10 and people are basically infected. You can actually move this around to explore the infection around the world as it lands in other countries. Flights accelerate the spread of the infection. Many countries choose to close their borders. Martial law is established as lootings and riots are now a global phenomenon. The official death toll reaches 900 38,696 people. In 2013, there were 27 million military personnel in the world. That's only 3.8 soldiers per thousand civilians. I'm not sure why this is here, actually. Uh, th these are all randomly generated. I actually, this is not my first time try trying this, and the last time I had something more relevant to this particular situation. But I guess it tells you that there's not enough military around the world, which is why the countries lost control. I'm going to go to the next part. And situation is out of control. Law enforcement is completely overwhelmed. Soldiers are seen abandoning their positions. You can see the entire Asia is now orange. Afraid of getting killed, people stay at home with no one to maintain the infrastructures. And your internet dies down. Uh, most of the Asia is infected. Chaos is everywhere. Work absenteeism now exceeds 50%. This means that people don't go to work anymore. The first nuclear power plants have stopped running, which means there is no more energy because a lot of our nuclear power, I believe uh, something like 50% of nuclear power in South Korea is, is from, um, oh, so, sorry, just energy in general is actually from nuclear power. And uh, most countries, especially US and um, countries like Russia, France, England, they use nuclear power for uh, production of most of their energy. It takes for uh, it takes two days for nuclear power to automatically shut down if humans don't interfere. Uh, it ceases to work after about two days of being abandoned by humans. 
All right, so next uh, we have 200,000 dead, 1 million people, or sorry, 1 billion people infected. And there we go. This is the death of our culture. Civilization has ended. No more electricity. The world is now dark. There is over a billion infected and over 200 million, almost 300 million dead. The world is plunged into darkness. Without energy or communication, the chain of command is broken. Madagascar has fallen. Sudan has fallen. All countries are falling. South Korea has fallen as well. And that's the end of society. So it kind of gives you the statistics. These are actually always different depending on what location you choose. There, um, you can actually improve your score if you try this again. I, I my score before was actually much a little bit higher. But this is essentially a kind of a trailer for this particular game. Now I'm not trying to promote the game. As a matter of fact, I am personally not even sure if I'll buy this game because it's just not that type of type of game that I usually enjoy. It is essentially a shooter game and you can actually watch the trailer to see what it's like Peggy where 18. you play as a character that is uh, trying to survive um, the apocalypse, the end of the world, and you play as one of the characters, one of the survivors, and you basically are trying to collect uh, better equipment, better weapons, better loot, and so on and so forth. Um, now, uh, all in all, I actually enjoy this a lot more than I think I will enjoy the division even even if I buy it I think this is a lot more fun for me and so do give this a try I think this is actually a pretty awesome teaching tool especially if you're uh, trying to teach something like bacterial infections or how viruses spread or if you're actually learning about them in biology and if you want to try this yourself or if you want to beat my score which actually was 669,000 dead if you want to beat that uh, try this yourself the link for this is in the description below let me know what score you get and uh, let me know if you actually are able to kill everyone because i don't know if that's even possible not that i'm promoting that but it'd be fun if you can actually destroy the entire earth or at least get to uh, 7 billion people dead Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little short video that features this kind of an interesting simulation called The Collapse. I'll see you guys in the next video. In the next video, you're going to learn something else awesome. Thank you for watching. Give me later and bye-bye.